One of the earlier series on my channel was called Will It Play, where I examined the Intel HD 530 integrated GPU's ability to play modern day game titles. While I stopped that series mainly due to the time consumption each episode took, as well as the desire to take my channel in a different direction, the interest that I've had in the free GPU performance a CPU gives you still remains. So, today's video will be a hearkening back to the simpler times of my YouTube channel, and I'm going to see if the brand new Intel HD 630 can play modern day titles. For the testing, I'm using the Intel Core i7-7700K, but I need you to listen to me carefully. The Intel HD 630 should be roughly the same on every chip from the Pentium G4620 to the i3-7100 to the i5-7600K. The frequency difference of 50 MHz on the 630 on the lower end CPUs should be negligible in practical applications. At least that's what all of the testing I've done with integrated graphics would indicate. I've attempted to overclock the HD 530 before and it made little impact on overall performance. Also, the Pentium should perform roughly the same as the i7 simply due to the fact that the GPU is what's limiting your performance here, not the CPU. If you want to see how a four-threaded CPU affects gaming performance, check out my video right over there. Here's the important bit though. While the CPU shouldn't affect your frame rates too much, your RAM configuration that you're running will. To get the best performance out of your iGPU, one, you need to be running your RAM in a dual channel configuration. So make sure you have two sticks. And number two, it needs to be running at the highest speed possible. So if your results on your system are different than mine, please make sure you're actually running your RAM appropriately. If you're only running single channel memory, you can expect up to a 40% reduction in frame rates. So make sure you have two sticks if you're going to be depending on this iGPU. So for the RAM configuration, I I used it's a 2x8 gigabyte kit of G-Skill Ripjaws 5 graciously provided by WooAir running at 2400 megahertz with a cast latency of 15. As far as the games that were tested, I attempted to get a mix of AAA titles and more competitive games in the fold. And rather than read off a list of FPS numbers for this video, I decided to record the experience so you can see what it's like. Keep in mind, all of my tests were run at 1080p. So if you're going to be running at a resolution less than that, you can expect different results. Up first, Grand Theft Auto V. I attempted to run this game at my typical benchmark settings of nearly all of the graphics cranked up besides anti-aliasing, and expectedly the 630 choked running at a paltry and cringe-inducing 9 to 10 frames per second. However, once I dropped the settings to as low as they go, the game became a playable high 20 FPS average. Not the greatest, but certainly enough that you can still rock some GTA V while you wait for your new GPU to arrive in the mail. Next was CSGO. I left most of the graphical settings turned up just to see initially what to expect. And honestly, it wasn't too bad. Floating anywhere from 30 to 60 FPS made it a completely usable setup. Dropping the settings to about as low as they go produced an over 60 FPS average, which means you can get the buttery smooth action you want just with less visual fidelity. Doom on the other hand, don't. Just don't. Dropping all of the visual settings yielded a 12 to 15 FPS average, which allows you to aim better because the game runs at a slower pace, but honestly is too bad for me to want to play. It's a far cry from the 60 FPS goodness that you'll need to actually enjoy this high energy game. The Witcher 3 is a similar story, but even worse performance. 10 FPS average. Buy a graphics card. Even an RX 460 will help you out a lot here. League of Legends obviously is totally fine. Crank up those details and you'll still be able to jam the game somewhere near the 100 FPS mark. Unfortunately, my gameplay is trash, so even a stable frame rate couldn't save me from dying constantly. Overwatch, the last competitive title on my list, at lowest settings, 1080p, is playable. A high 20 FPS average makes it so that you can play the game and not expect for your computer to lock up during the high particle teamfights. 
It's not ideal, but if you only have money for an i3-7100 at this point and you need to save cash for the dedicated GPU, then you'll still be able to at least play this game. And then finally, the game everyone has been waiting for. The question that I know you have been asking repeatedly since this video began, the one that's been making you beg for me to just skip the rest of the games and get to it already, can the Intel HD 630 run Crisis? Well, at the lowest settings possible, at 1080p, possibly? It's not the worst frame rate I've ever played a game on, I can assure you of that. I remember the days of playing full games of Team Fortress 2 on my desktop's Intel Graphics Media Accelerated chip and basically only seeing half of the action at any given moment. Unfortunately, on the realistic side of things, if Crisis is your jam, then it'll be a rough experience. However, I will say that it's encouraging that GPUs that come bundled with CPUs can even entertain the discussion of running Crisis at this point. It's not a perfect solution, admittedly, but there's definitely a lot to respect about the new integrated graphics chip bundled with KB Lake processors. If you're tight on cash, then it's likely a really good stopgap measure for your competitive esports titles such as CSGO and League of Legends until you can pick up your much coveted GTX 1060 or RX 480. I know the PC Master Race can typically be about making sure everything is running at 144Hz at 1440p, but there's also the reality that many of us are in situations where we just can't afford a high-end system like that. And I'm happy to say that Intel is helping out that side of the PCMR market with the HD630. It's still not as good as an AMD APU, but it does come with the ability to have features such as native USB 3.0, front headers, M.2 drives, and the like. Honestly, if I was still a student back in university, I could see myself only having a KB Lake i3 and no graphics card and just jamming out most of my games on that system. It's respectively a good enough solution for those who don't have enough budget to even consider buying a graphics card. And with that conclusion, I want to thank both ASUS South Africa and Wootware for sponsoring the parts for this video. ASUS graciously lent me the 7700K chip as well as the Maximus 9 Formula motherboard to test everything out on, with Wootware coming to my aid with the rest of the components for the testbed. Be sure to check them out if you're in South Africa and you're looking to upgrade your system. The link for both of those companies will be in the video description. And that's going to make dude for today's video. Be sure to let me know how you felt about the video with a like or a dislike. Leave a comment down below about, you know, what you think of Intel's new integrated GPU. Is it a good enough solution for you if you're waiting to buy a graphics card later? Or is it even good enough for you to just have as your primary graphics card for the foreseeable future? Let's have that conversation down below. Be sure to subscribe if you're new around here to stay up to date on all of my tech related content and I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers. I was so concerned that thing was going to fall.